Hello world and welcome to Not Your Average Boss. Today we're going to be talking about career development and how we can best look at ways we can identify what career path is best for us. Um, it's a lot of different factors that can go into that. It's not really a linear situation. It's more so, um, it's more so variable, quadratic. Um, there's different multi- you know, things that go into that, multipliers, if you will, that goes into us determining what job or what career or position fits us fits us best. So uh, we're going to look at different things that can help us identify in different methods, different steps that can help us identify what career will be most fulfilling, what career um, yields the best opportunities for us. Um, and then at the end, we're going to kind of look at a uh, career assessment um, on careerfitter.com that kind of ties in uh, everything as well. But kind of want to do it a little differently. I'm doing a video for my YouTube page um, for this one as well. So I'm going to kind of have a kind of walkthrough of the blog post on my site, not, not your average boss.com. Um, so we're going to kind of walk through it and, and see um, the different stages. I think that'll be the best way to tackle it. And for my listeners um, on Spotify, Apple podcasts and uh, Google podcasts and all around the world, this is uh, going to be on YouTube. So you can check out the actual footage there. But uh, let's get into it here. But career development, what, you know, career path is best for you, how to find the best career path for you. So, and I thought this was interesting. I mean, it's one of those topics where, you know, it, it ties into our purpose. It ties it into feeling fulfilled and what drives us, what motivates us what makes us tick when it comes to, you know, being people, you know, individuals, human beings um, who want to make an impact in the world. Um, You know, it's it's deeper than just money. It's deeper than I want to make money. I know I need to make money. My parents made money and took care of us. So I I know I have to do the same thing and follow that same line of, of thinking when it comes to my career pathing. And, you know, money, of course, is a, is a great motivator. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when it comes to salary and things like that here in a, in a bit. But ultimately, it's about feeling fulfilled. Does my job make me feel fulfilled? Does my job make me, you know, feel like I'm making an impact in our society, in our world, in our culture? Um, because those things are going to help us have the most meaning when it comes to our job and our job duties and our job tasks and us being motivated and driven to advance in that particular career career field. So let's look at different stages. And I found this from um, uh, online here, the, the different stages, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, give me one second here. So, yeah, let's delve into it like that. So this is from uh, cypresscollege.edu, this will and stages of preparation when it comes to identifying our career that that will be most fulfilled in. So we're going to talk about this in five stages. Okay. So stage one is to learn about yourself. And I'm going to go through the stages um, kind of up front. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about them here in a moment as far as each stage and how to you know prepare within each stage. So stage one is learn about yourself. Stage two is explore your major and career options. Stage three is make decisions and set your goals. Stage four is plan your education. And stage five is prepare for your career. So we know we, you know, searching for a job can be overwhelming. When you think about when you first started working, your first job you ever had, um, there's a lot of pressure. It can feel overwhelming. You know, you go to those job fairs, you, you know, maybe have friends that of the family that give you a job and give you opportunities there. And um, help you develop your work ethic early and, and help you get a foundation when it comes to the workforce. You may have that, and that's good. That's going to help you with your trajectory and with your pathing um, as you advance in your career. You know, do I want to go to college? Do I need college for this particular job? Uh, do I need skills? You know, what kind of skills do I need to, what trade school I need to attend to obtain those skills I need to be proficient in this job? So you have to ask yourself those questions, but it can be a daunting task. When, when you're trying to find the career path for you, um, you know, we know we want to make money. We need money to survive. We know, you know, um, that that is, you know, the base level of 
finding a career that works for you because a lot of careers, you know, they start off like they're stepping stones, you know, you work at a call center, you work at fast food, you work um, in um, hospitality and things like that. And that's a stepping stone for you to, you know, say you're going to school and you're trying to, you know, figure out what you want to do and what you want to major in. You know, you have, we have those jobs that are kind of like placeholder jobs um, for the, the, you know, the other jobs that we actually want to work or positions or careers we actually want to pursue. So those are kind of placeholder jobs, but even in a placeholder job, you could still find meaning and purpose there and advance and grow where you're planted. Cause I love that, you know, that's you no know, frame of mind. And that's that, that phrase of growing where we're planted because, you know, we don't always get what we want right away, you know, and it's going to take a lot of motivation and perseverance, um, to get through those times where we have, we have those jobs that aren't necessarily what we really want to do, but you got to learn about yourself at stage one, right? What makes you inspired, what motivates you to want to work. Um, some of your favorite hobbies and pastimes, you know, can, can you make careers out of these? Um, you know, you may like to sew, you may like to knit, you may like to play video games. You may like to, you know, do um, podcasts or do um, YouTube videos and things like that. Or you may like to, you know, uh, bake and sell goods, um, uh, bake goods on the side and things like that. So, you know, these hobbies, are they hobbies that can uh, translate into income? Are they hobbies that can translate into a career and allow you to, you know, make money, be profitable? Um, and also ultimately find, you know, that meaning first and foremost. But, you know, when you answer these questions, um, you want to look at making a list of five jobs that correlate or in line with what inspires you and your favorite, you know, your hobbies, your pastimes. Um, and if the job doesn't fit completely, um, you can go ahead and move on to the next one or the one that's close to that job. But you want to make a list of five jobs um, that correlate with that. Because we're going to, you know, talk about this list and kind of um, um, streamline it a little bit here in a moment. But start with that. Start with making a list of five jobs. Um, and we're going solely not off, off salary and everything yet, but based solely off of is this a job that core lines with your values, your motivations, what inspires you to work and your favorite hobbies and pastimes. All right. So once you make that list of five that correlate, we're going to stage two. Explore your major and career opportunities. So, you know, after you got that list of five, we're going to prioritize with one being the most favorable or preferred job and five being the least. So if your jobs require you no know, college training based on your research you've done, which college do you plan on attending that offers the program, the degree or training you need? So, you know, you have to look at that. So you prioritize in that list of five jobs, you know, one being the most favorable, five being the least. And we're going to look at if those each of those jobs need some type of training or program that you need to attend um, to get the job and apply for the job and actually get the job. So, you know, once you determine that and how you can enroll, you know, student advisors can help with that financial aid. Um, there's videos on colleges uh, online, YouTube, Google. You can find videos to assist you with your steps of, you know, how do I attend? How do I, you know, um, submit for, you know, financial aid and things like that, you know, student advisors, financial um, or, or aid and uh, student advisors can kind of get you in the right direction as far as the school that you're interested in. You know, they have, they usually have videos or welcome videos online for those type of colleges and, um, you know, trade schools and things like that. You could always learn more about them, you know, go to their website and, you know, they'll let you know the next steps on how to enroll. So um, once you find that out, and look at the career opportunities that are associated um, with the degrees that you need. Um, so do you have to, you know, if you're, you know, if, and also if you already tamed your, you know, bachelor's and things like that, or associates, master's, your doctorate, if, after you, you know, obtain those, you want to also look at that because you may be in a position where you've already obtained those and you're trying to look to, you know, pivot and, and do something different. Uh, do, 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 does my new career path, does my new uh, trajectory do I need to, you know, is my bachelor's going to help me here? Is my master's going to help me here? Um, and a lot of times, you know, we put a, put a lot of money into those degrees, right? You know, I've seen recently on LinkedIn, um, somebody was like, hey, you know, experience is everything. You know, a, a degree, I believe, Morgan Freeman, I don't know if it's a direct quote from Morgan Freeman, but it was talking about how a degree is a piece of paper, basically. Um, and the real value is an experience. And I, I do agree uh, to, to some degree with that statement because, um, 
experience is invaluable. You know, if you have the work ethic, you have, if you have the experience um, in, a, in a certain field, you can be taught, you can be trained, everything else that goes along with that, maybe admin work, maybe different facets of that program or um, that department you can learn. But if you have the experience already, it's going to be an easier transition when you get into that position. So um, experience is invaluable. Um, but, you know, degrees, we don't we don't downplay degrees. They're expensive and they're expensive piece of paper that can get you into the door and open doors and opportunities for you. Um, so never downplay your degree. Um, it may not be the way you want to go at first. You know, I went to the military first and helped me pay for, uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, some of my schooling. So um, you may want to go that route or look at routes, you know, how you can get a grant, Pell Grants, and uh, look into how you can do that. Even scholarships now, um, if you're in high school still, you know, look at, look at your um, options of how can I, what programs offer me type, some type of scholarship. That way, you know, my school, I don't really have to worry about paying for school like that. I could focus on my schooling, focus on my major and um, knock it out the park when it comes to that. Because, you know, of course you could still graduate when you have a, a huge bill uh, and focus on school when you have a huge bill looming <laughs> in the background when it comes to your degrees. Cause you got to think, man, associate's degree, what, 20, 20 to 30 K bachelors, 40 to 50 masters, 60 to 80 or a thousand doctorate, probably a thousand or so far as the actual degree itself that you have to pay for going to school. So it could be very expensive going to school and that could be overwhelming, but um, you know, you want to research that don't, don't get too caught up in that. You want to know, but you know, if it falls in line with what you want to do and your passions and your, you know, career, um, development, then you want to look at how I can can go to school to better myself, you know, because some you just need associates, some, you know, fields you just need bachelors, some fields you don't need the the um, the master's or doctorate. I mean, it's cool to have, but you, you may not need that. So, you know, you don't have to keep going if it's a situation where, hey, I'm good where I'm at. I'm, I'm doing what I love and I'm, I'm there because, you know, your passion is doing what you love. We know your talents is what you can do. Uh, your passion is what you love to do and your purpose is what you're meant to do. So when these three elements align, it really helps us become our true selves. It really helps us become um, content with our lives. And hey, I'm really making a difference and we can be as effective as possible um, in society when we these three elements combine. You know, so it's important to to have our, you know, a job, a career, a position that we can do that in when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my passion, you know, my talents are being utilized to the fullest. My purpose is, is tied up in, in this because I'm helping people or, you know, I feel like I'm drawn to help people or help animals or help, you know, uh, uh, the environment or, you know, what I'm saying whatever your passions are, when once they align your passions, your purpose, your, your career, uh, your talent, you feel fulfilled. And that's what we're trying to get. It doesn't mean there's not challenges within that, because a lot of times your passions and your purpose comes with a lot of man ups and downs and trials and, trials and tribulations and setbacks. And, you know, you feel like a lot of times you question, am I even really supposed to do this? And a lot of times um, that happens with our passions and our purpose, but um, and even our talent, we doubt our, we can second guess our, our talent when things go wrong. Um, but does it, is it a, uh, yearning that you have a lot of times you got to go back to that urge to to do this career you know why do I always think about it like why am I always consumed by these thoughts of doing this career or trying to make it better or you know think about how can I research this to solve this problem because a lot of times and we're going to look at you know delving into entrepreneurial the entrepreneurial side of of career advancement too um, but how do I solve a problem, you know, and, and how does my job solve a problem? How does this career solve a problem? Because a lot of times our meaning can be tied and our purpose can be tied into what problem this job solves. So you want to look at that as well. But we've made our list. We, we explored our, our major and our career opportunities. Um, and we, we looked at how we can enroll, we looked at what degrees we need. So we're moving on now to stage three, which is making decisions and setting goals. So this ties into stage two as well. So by making decisions on which school you want to attend, jobs you want to apply for, companies you want to work with, you know, this is this is where, you know, we look at streamlining it a little bit more when it comes to our list of jobs and priorities, um, when, when it comes to the jobs that we want to do and the, um, the jobs align with our, our 
passions and our hobbies and our interests um, and our inspiration when it comes to the workforce. So we're narrowing the, the, the list to three now. What's my th top three favorable jobs based on what I just said as far as inspiration and passion? And now we're going to throw salary in there and, and career advancement opportunity. So now we're going to throw and look at salary. Um, you know, what is the, the, the median salary in your, your area for that job? Look at that. Are they plan paying that? Are they paying close to that? And some jobs don't disclose that um, on the application when you're trying to apply, like online, they don't dis disclose that what the salary is going to be. And that's fine. You can ask, you know, when you get an interview with them, what the salary is. And if they don't know, then, then it kind of is like, okay, well, I kind of want to know what my salary is going to be. Um, but typically they let you know the starting rate or what it could be, you know, an estimate of what it could be. And there may be some room for negotiation depending upon, upon your school and things like that. So um, for me, um, of course, money is important, but my, my thing was and always is, um, and this is my approach. And like I said, um, do what fits best for you. My approach was always, yeah, I want to know what I'm going to make. Um, Cause I want to do my budget and tie that in. And, you know, are we going to be good for the, you know, does this work with our budget and can we pay off our bills? Could we do the financial plan with this job? You know, we want to look at that too, but um, I went in there with the mindset of how can I do my job the best? Like, how can I learn this job to where I'm an invaluable asset to this company? Because if I'm an invaluable asset, then that means that my negotiate or my bartering power my, and, and me being able to negotiate uh, at a later time comes into play. I hide in that ability. I, I, I hide in that skill. Like I hide in my, um, you know, what I mean to that company, you know, and how to, you know, when when you're in that place, you know, you know how to maneuver and things like that. You're the go-to. When you put yourself to be the go-to in that department, you make yourself really accessible to career advancement. You make yourself accessible to growth and you know, bonuses and things like that. So those doors open up when you are in a position of excellence, you operate that way. Um, so focus on how I can be as great as possible in this position. Doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. Doesn't mean that it's not going to be hurdles you got to jump or obstacles you have to overcome or challenges along the way. It doesn't mean you're not going to face those things, but try to um, maximize your effort in everything you do as far as when it comes to your job, because you want to show that to those who are in charge. You want to show that to upper management, to your direct um manager or supervisor. You want to show them that you are that reliable person, that person to go to when it comes to this. You're sold into the vision because when you do that, you're, like I said, you put yourself in a position to get first dibs on certain things. You know, hey, I want to make sure I take care of this person because they're taking care of us and taking care of our business and taking care of our customers and taking care of the clients and doing what they need to do. So focus on how you can make yourself invaluable because um, the salary is going to come, you know, this, the money's going to come um, and you can get more negotiating power when the time comes because you are a valuable asset to that company. So let's focus on that um, as well. But, you know, like I said, salary, career, career advancement. Does this job offer those things? Like, um, what's my base pay? Because, you know, salary could be one of those things where, yo, salary is great. I love salary, but it could be a situation where you work more, too, um, because you, you're outside of that 40 hour, 60 hour parameter, right? A week parameter. So you have to look at, OK, is this job demanding to where I work more hours than I really want to work? Because that's going to be another issue you're running to along the line, dealing with burnout and things like that. So um, every job has its challenges. You're not going to find out. I don't think there's a perfect job out there, but there is a preferred job for us out there um, and a job that a purposeful job for us out there um, that that's for us. You know, um, even with the purposeful job, there is challenges. So just keep that in your mind, you know, when you think about that. But we're looking at three favorable jobs um, that are based on our inspiration, passion, salary and career advancement opportunities. You want to set practical goals that you can meet within 30 to 60 days from that point. You know, examples of that would be this week I'm going to speak with a career counselor or student advisor. Or it can be I'm going to research the company that has a job I want more and apply it if it meets my requirements. So these are you know, practical, meaning that you can like apply them right away, goals that you want to implement and you don't want to take too much time with it. I mean, I really would say uh, do the, uh, the former, which is 30 days apart from the latter 60, because if you do all that within 60 days or 30 days, then you kind of have more of a, a leg up in the situation. 
because you're getting the ball rolling on, on it, especially if it's a situation where you're making a transition and you need to know like in a couple of weeks, like, hey, I need this job within a couple of weeks because I already gave my two weeks notice or I, I let my job know I'm leaving. So this job has to come through, you know, so um, the you know, of course, 60 days gives you more flexibility, but 30 days I would try to, you know, set those goals within that 30 days and figure out what you need to do. Apply for the job. Is it online or can I go in per person? And even if it's online, I want to make sure I have my updated resume to hand into them. So when the time comes, uh, I can check in. And typically it takes about a couple of weeks or so for companies to get back to you sometimes sooner than that, if they're you know, really in need for um, applicant for that position or candidate for that position, um, it may be sooner than that, but typically it's two weeks that you'll hear back from a company after you apply for the job. So, um, but within that time frame, you're already prepared though. So you, you already have your, your job as um, far as your decisions made when it comes to it. And it doesn't mean that you don't, don't apply for different jobs. You can apply for different jobs within that. Remember we have top three. <laughs> we want to apply for top three, right? Like, so we'll, we'll apply for, you know, three jobs in that situation and then, you know, play the waiting game. Now, if it's a situation to where you don't hear back from none of those jobs in that time frame, then of course you want to go, okay, what's my next two? Cause we made a list of five, right? So let's go to the next two jobs and apply from there. Um, say you don't get those jobs. It, it's, you know, a reality that, that can happen. The job market is a little bit weird. I mean, yeah, we have, you know, there's a lot of job opportunities now with everything going on with, you know, people looking for, you know, different career changes and things. So there's, there's opportunities there. Um, so you may want to revamp it and go through the step of stage one again and write down, you know, jobs, five more jobs that fit into that situation. So um, don't get stuck on, oh, I only got three options. That's it. No, you have a plethora of options within that specific niche or market that you're looking to get in that fits your passion. So um, and you, you may only have a couple in that. So you may have to um, revamp and have to you know, reroute and reevaluate or reassess what you want to do. Um, so you have to look at that as well. So of course we want the preferable job. You always want the preferable job. When I look at my life, I wanted the preferable job, but I ended up getting jobs that I didn't necessarily like at first. And I kind of questioned like, why am I here? Um, you know, at a call center in this stage of my life, you know, feeling like I'm at the, at the later stage of my life and I have uh, 22 years of, of work experience under my belt. So, um, and, and nine of those came from the call center. Well, matter of fact, Actually, 11 came from the call center. So that's pretty crazy. You know, some came from the army, some came from uh, mechanic contract mechanic works. Uh, some came from being a janitor. So um, I've tried different jobs. And of course, you know, I didn't want to be a janitor, but I got laid off. So I had to do something. And I, I took odd end jobs to help with when, you know, it came to offsetting some of the bills. And when you're laid off from a job, that's a really challenging situation because you're trying to figure out what's the next step. And a lot of pressure of my bills don't stop, even though I got you know, fired from this job or laid off. Uh, same thing. Um, my money stopped. So I have to figure out what the next step is. And it's, it's amazing. And I'm probably going to talk about it here soon. You probably hear me say this again in another episode, but the power of desperation. Um, I think uh, there, there's an actual book on that. I have to look into that um, a little more, I think is a, uh, I can't remember the name of the author. I have to look into that, but right off the top of my head, but the power of desperation is basically, you know, when you're desperate for something, you look at all options to get it. You know, how can I get a job to make money, to take care of my family and put food on the table and continue to pay this mortgage and continue to pay these bills. So, you know, that desperation kicked in. It was like, oh man, I gotta do, I gotta do something. You know, first, of course, it's panic. <laughs> that's natural. It's worry. That's natural. But once that subsides and you kind of get your bearings, it becomes desperation, which is a decent place to be because that gives you motivation and drive that sometimes when we are in a place of um, fulfillment or contentment, or we're in a place of everything's going good. And we're in a season of, man, this is great. I don't have any issues like that. Um, I'm not really as challenged as I, I was. We can get a little bit lax. So the pressure, it does produce diamonds and the pressure can push you to find your greatest um, self, find your greatest asset, find your, your greatest motivation and push you to a level that you didn't even realize you can be at when it comes to your perseverance and your drive. So think about OK. You know, I'm not saying how desperate I am for a job because we're, we're we're being prepared. Right. We're, this is the whole uh, purpose of this podcast episode um, and the career development 
on Not Your Average Boss as far as um, the whole site and this particular blog post. But, you know, we want to be as prepared as possible, of course. But life happens. And what are we going to do when life happens? You know, how prepared are, are we for when life happens? So do we have that emergency fund? Do we have money to fall back on? Are, are, are our bills uh, set? Um, do we have, you know, three to six months worth for, uh, for bills and things like that? And um, so we have to look at all of those when it comes to it. But, you know, getting back to my, my situation, I, I was desperate and I found a job um, doing odd ends. I worked in a trash dump for a little bit. I worked at a plastic factory, dog food factory. You know, I just did odd end jobs because I was, I, was, I was trying to find a job. Couldn't really find a job for some reason at that time. And um, I was applying everywhere, but I just couldn't find a job or couldn't land a job. So that's a real situation. You may apply and may not get the jobs that are on your list of favorable jobs. Um, but you keep trying, you know, what's the next best thing, you know, okay, I may have to work one of those jobs where it's just every day. It's not like, it's like, um, uh, it's like a workforce, uh, workforce uh, job. I can't think of the name of it. Um, like a labor like job, like, you know, they, you're kind of like a, a contractor, so to speak, you sign up for the job, you actually go down. A lot of them are like downtown and things like that. Like in, um, where you get your, uh, your tags and things like that and uh, different type of licenses like downtown. Clowny clerk is what I want to say. Uh, a lot of the, those jobs are, you know, they can help you with those jobs as far as um, like different employment companies and things like that. If you if you need like, you know, a quick job real quick now. Of course, you got fast food. Of course, you got different jobs that, you know, may hire you when it comes to retail and, and um electronics and things like that. So you want to look there too. But for me, that wasn't working. So I had to go the route of, you know, every day, look for a job every day, go up there at six o'clock or every day, go up there seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Let's see if they have any jobs available for us. And sometimes you wait up there for hours and you're just waste your day because they don't have a job for you. So, um, and some gigs or some of those labor companies have, you no, know, they're pretty good with the job. So that every day you're going to be working. It may be a different job every day, but you're working and you're making money that day. So did that for a little bit, but, you know, by the grace of God, um, someone came up to me and was like, you know, when I was going to, um, uh, I think, um, uh, put my, uh, my hours in for, for that week, um, ran into them and they were like, you know, God told me to come to you and tell you that, you know, Hey, I have a job opportunity for if you want it. And it was to be a janitor at an independent living uh, nursing nursing home situation. And not really nursing home because they were independent living, but it's like a um, uh, uh, more for um, uh, older uh, folks. So um, I did that for a while, you know, um, and it made, you know, nine dollars an hour and things like that. But it helped me cover my bills. So um, you always want to, to take an approach of, you know, I'm thankful regardless of what job you get. Of course, I wanted to prepare for it. Like, like I said, I, I didn't prepare prepare well at that time uh, when I got laid off from my uh, contracted mechanic job. I didn't prepare for it. Like, we didn't really have a lot of savings. We didn't really set up that. And I'm thankful that I'm in a good place now, but, you know, then it was tough. But, you know, people have those type of opportunities that we can share uh, experiences that we can share um, so others don't have to do it. And if others do have to do it, they have a blueprint on how to be successful within that. So like I said, you just never know. You keep going. Like I kept kept going. What if I didn't go that day? <laughs> I would have missed my opportunity to have steady work that I you know I worked at that independent living uh, place for two and a half years. So I wouldn't have steady work. I had a steady paycheck paying my bills uh, on time um, with that job. So um, it wasn't the most favorable, but neither was uh, working at a trash dump and, and no knock to y'all. Cause that was hard work. Whoever works in a trash dump, but yo, it, you stink after a while. It's a hard job. Like for one, you're working in a trash dump that already stinks. And then you got shoveling trash in a trash dump. It's just crazy. But I salute y'all, man. Like I said, I, I feel like I was on undercover boss, like nonstop when I worked at that job. Cause I was like seeing how people did certain things. Um, but that, that had to be one of the hardest jobs though, man. Cause like I said, it stunk. And then you have to, you know, shovel trash in a trash dump when it's kind of weird. You have to organize the trash, basically. So I salute y'all, man. Like I said, it, there's a lot of jobs out there that people do that we're like, you know, we don't even know about. And it's like, man, this is amazing. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, I didn't think this was even a job to do shoveling trash in a trash dump. So salute to y'all, man. Like, that's amazing. Um, But somebody has to do it, you know, and, you know, bless their hearts. They, they, they chose that they stepped up to the plate to do it. 
you know, had ambitions of being a fireman at one point in time. And this is me just going on, sharing my experiences. We're going to get to the stages. Um, if you don't know me by now, I do like to ramble a little bit, but it's pertinent. It's pertinent to the conversation. And I think it's going to help. So if I feel like it's going to help, I just let it flow. So um, but we're going to move on here in a second um, to stage four, playing your education. But, you know, you really want to look at you know, the stepping stone jobs, the placeholder jobs, because those are when you find a lot of your character, you find a lot of your drive and motivation in those type of jobs. So you kind of want to look at, you know, when you're there, don't knock it like, yo, I'm gonna work as hard as I can in this trash dump, I'm gonna work as hard as I can in this plastic factory, dog food factory, and do what I got to do um, to earn this check, you know, because it builds that character, it builds that work ethic that you're going to need to help propel you uh, to the next dimension in your, your career. So, but planning your education by this stage, we figured out if we're going to college or specialized training uh, to obtain a degree or skills necessary for the position. So we have the roadmap of where to enroll and, you know, how to, you know, the, the courses we need to obtain the degree. We have that now at this stage. So, you know, if the job we selected is an entry level position where there's no degree required, um, so, you know, we look for information on job duties in the industry to prepare us further. So, you may not have a degree needed for that position, but you still want to be as prepared as possible um, when it comes to that. So you can research the company, research the industry uh, industry they're in and what's suspected of employees and how they bring value to the, the, the society or the workforce. So you can start doing your preparation in that way. Um, and then the final stage is stage five, prepare for your career. Uh, making sure, you know, like I said, by this point, you pretty much have an updated resume. You want to update your resume according to every um, situation that you file for, every job that you apply for. You want to make sure you have a resume for each. Um, so you make sure you have updated resume by this point. Um, it's a good place to start once you reach that final stage. Um, does your resume fit the requirements of the description for the position? Are you able to fill out the application and submit your resume online or do we have to go in person? So you want to look at all of the next steps when it comes to actually applying for the jobs. Um, you know, and if you can supply or submit your resume online. So that's kind of where it's at. We do have a preparation, career preparation checklist on Not Your Average Boss under resources. It's a free, you know, I have a lot of free resources on Not Your Average Boss. So please feel free to look and um, download them uh, as your heart contents. It's PDF files um, that you could download. Um, a career preparation checklist. And it's really good, inf good information because it puts us, it makes us more accountable on the next steps. Like, you know, did we further prepare for the job? Did we do everything we needed to do when it came to um, our metrics on that previous job, you know, because that's going to set us up for success in our next job um, and career. Uh, did we um, financially set ourselves up to, to win? You know, do is it going to be something that we are going to have to worry about when it comes to that? Are we going to miss um, uh, payment or have to be late because we have to, you know, we don't have enough in the bank to make this transition because we want to make it as seamless as possible and preparing for it. Uh, the transition is what's going to make it as seamless as possible. So, you know, check that out when you have a moment. But now we're going to get to some fun things. And I think this was really groundbreaking because I've, I've, I've never heard of it until I actually researched this topic a little more as far as when it comes to the traditional career path and the protein career path. Um, protein, protein. Um, this is interesting because um, when you look at do I want to work a traditional nine to five, which is what the traditional career is, is climbing the proverbial you know, ladder when it comes to our job, you know, um, advancing, you know, normally you come in entry level, you become a supervisor, you become a manager, you become a uh, operations manager, you become a director, stuff like that. So it's more um, a ladder. It's more, that's, that's a more linear situation. Um, but when you look at a pro protean career path, it's pretty much your hands are in everything. And it's pretty much you're kind of like an entrepreneur looking at different hobbies and looking at how you can further advance your yourself with jobs that are meaningful to you, positions that are meaningful for, uh, to you. Um, you know, you hear it all the time, you know, millionaires, they have like seven streams of income and things like that. And a lot of times it's true because they have their hands in a lot of different things. And really their main thing is what got them to the seven different things, whether it's real estate or um, you know, entertainment or music or whatever, you know, they started at their, their base level passion. Right. And then they worked their way from there. You know, I want to branch out to, you know, different industries and clothing and, and things like that. Um, from that point, you know, blogs or whatever, you know, writing and, um, 
branch out to actually doing now I'm, I'm doing uh, um, marketing and things like that. So it, it starts with the base. So start with your base passions and base hobbies from there. I mean, you don't uh, seven things I love to do. OK, you can you can do that. But, you know, focus on you know, maybe several little uh, 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 those things you love to do, maybe even a, just a couple, because, you know, if you are more focused, it's going to be easier for you to help people get focus. You know, it's a laser focus situation, you know? Um, you have a, there, there's, there's the, you have a light switch that illuminates the whole room, right? A light bulb illuminates the whole room. A laser illuminates certain points in the room, right? Uh, it really, it's really honed in on a certain small little area of that room to point out something uh, that's impactful, something that's significant to the conversation and the topic of discussion. So, you know, both have their element, both are needed, right? Both are needed in their perspective roles. Uh, so that's what you have to look at too, in respective roles. So um, different stages, we're different lights. You see what I'm saying? But um, ultimately, you know, your focus should be, and this is good because your focus should be the laser, right? You know, that's the that's the trajectory. That's your initial, you know, why that's your you know reason why you want to do this. That's your, you know, this is where I'm going in my career. And then the light bulb is the effect of it. You see the impact of it on people, because if, if, we, we're, if we're light bulbs in every situation, then it's going to be confusing because, you know, yes, yeah, illuminating the whole room and you can see everybody and you can see everything that's in the room. But how can you really make sound judgment when you have so much clutter and so much things distracting you because it could be a distraction too. I see everything. I see that. I see this. I see that, you know, but when I'm focused and lasered and honed in and dialed in, I could be my most effective self in that particular mindset. So we want to look at things to be um, how we can be, you know, laser focused on what we're trying to do. And, you know, different things can happen. Like I like to write, but ultimately my focus is helping people. You see what I'm saying? So how can I help people? I can write, you know what I'm saying? I can write blogs. I can share my experiences in the workforce. I can share some, some light on some things that way they'll know when they get to that point in their lives. So, you know, my focus, my laser is, is helping people, you know, uh, my light bulb is the blog. My light bulb is the, is, is the podcast. My light bulb is me writing um, fiction and doing other things. You see what I'm saying? My, my, my light bulb is me, you know, learning how to do the, the edits and things like that. So, you know, but my focus is helping people. You see what I'm saying? So um, you have to look at what your focus is. And from there, you can be more beneficial and impactful to those who are looking for your product. Because there's people who are looking for the product from you and you alone. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people in the business space. There's a lot of people in the podcast space. A lot of great people, way better than me. And, and I admonish you listen to those people. But there's some people that come find me somehow and they want to listen to me, you know, and that's cool. You know, I add on to, to whatever they have um, in their tool belt. Hopefully I do that. You know, that's my intent anyway, um, that you gain some from it. If you don't, you, you check me out and thank you for checking me out, you know, and looking at the, the, the website and listening to the blog you or the podcast, you check, you checked it out. Um, and it may not have been for you, but thank you for checking it out. But you see what I'm saying? Some people are looking just for you, though, you see, and some people, they'll only hear it from you because how you relate to them, how they relate to you. So you have to be open to that, if, especially if you're going down the protein um, career path and uh, looking at that's a little more. And it's something on labor market uh, search. Um, the term protein I'm saying it protein, it's protein, protein. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right. Some people say it two different ways on that, but protein stems from a metaphor of Proteus, a sea god in Greek mythology who had the gift of prophecy and used metamorphosis to hide his knowledge from others. Um, so that's from the labor market street. Uh, got that from there. But also means being variable or ever changing regarding your career management and adaptability, according to the, uh, Douglas T. Hall and John P. Uh, Briscoe, who kind of looked into the protein career path a little more, kind of explained it a little further, uh, look into them as well, because they have a lot of good information on um, the topic. But what is the right route to take? You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times, most of us, the majority of us take the traditional career route um, and figure things out from there. 
you know, and that's what happened with me. I, I took the traditional uh, route, climbed the ladder. And once I got to that point, I was ready to try something else and more so something that gave me more time back in my personal life and spent you know, time to spend with family. And it's, it was this, you see, but I prepared myself for that though, you know, um, paid off debt and, and set ourselves up to where our, our income was more than our debt or our expenses. So, you know, we're good, you see, but you have to, we had to, that took like almost, uh, or it took 18 months. So it took some time to prepare for that. You know, um, first we had to, you know, transform our mind, but from there we had to look at the practical steps we needed to take to make it happen. So you always, it starts with the, the paradigm shift. It starts with the mindset change, but then it start. then from there, you have to put it on paper and you have to look at how I can make this as practical and easy as possible. Like me being a thinker, and, and an analytical person um, most of the time, because sometimes I'm scatterbrained all over the place. I think that's, you know, probably deals with the analytical side too, but, um, but I have to know how things work. You see what I'm saying? So, and I have to understand how they work before I can be motivated to do them. So um, that's the thinker of in me, in my personality type. So, you know, what is your personality type? What makes you tick? That's important. We said that earlier. So know what makes you tick. Know your why behind the job. Because once you know the why, it's going to be easier to sustain that job and be as effective as possible in that job and, and, and flourish in that job. So know your why. But which route do I take? You know, on the site, we kind of delve into it a little more. And for my YouTube viewers, uh, you can see... Um, what we're looking at here, but traditional versus protein, uh, protein career. We'll look at three um, parts of it issue, traditional career, um, protein career. So, issue who's in charge? In the traditional career, it's organization, and protein, it is person. Core values, advancement. That's the focus of a traditional career um, person is how am I going to advance my career and move up this ladder to make more money? and have more influence and more status. That's the traditional way. Um, Protein is more freedom freedom and growth, work-life integration, meaning, you know, how can I make this more a part of my life to where my work-life balance is is more impacted with this or is, is, is um, more harmonious with this particular lifestyle? Like how, it's more about meaning with the protein apart from status. Like this job means more to me. You know, I have the freedom to grow how I wanna grow too because, I grew up my own pace. I learned at my own pace. I you know set my own schedule. I do my own, you know, research when I want to and, and things like that. So, um, uh, you, like I said, there's challenges with that because the, the traditional career is, you know, you're going to make that check every two weeks. You know, you're going to make that check every month, what you're going to make every month. Protein, you really don't because it's more so an entrepreneurial mindset, entrepreneurial path. Um, you don't know what you're going to make. You know, a lot of times you don't make anything. A lot of times you lose money the first year when you're an entrepreneur and things like that. Some, some out the gate make a lot of money and are profitable. Kudos to you. Um, um, but a lot of us, we don't, you see what I'm saying? So we have to figure out a way to offset that. You know, it has to be a passion. Like I said, you know, the money has to be the last thing on our mind when it comes to, you know, our career uh, growth and development. And, you know, when it comes to our progression, because, if we look at the money, we're going to quit, you know, as an entrepreneur, I'm not making no money doing this. So I'm going to quit because it's not you no know, profitable. Um, but then, you know, we quit before we actually really get our footing and actually really get into a good zone, a good stride and really start making some headway when it comes to this and really start uh, make, getting traction and impacting people and helping people, um, you know, when it comes to that. So we, we get frustrated. And each one has pros and cons. So, you know, you want to look at the pros and cons of each. That's a good way to, you know, kind of weed it out and things like that. But um, it is important. You know, profit is important. Of course, in business is, is important. You have to look at that. You have to know your business model. You have to look at how, you know, you, you first solve a problem, but, you know, and help people. But then your business model from that point, like, how do I going to set this up? Like, how are we going to move these units? How are we going to, uh, you know, uh, market this this podcast or blah? How are we going to, you know, what is the cost to do this? So you have to look at your um opportunity costs and your overhead and things like that. And you have to look at all of that. Um, your capital, you have to look at that when it comes to having, you know, your own business or, you know, the entrepreneurial route. Um, but the degree of mobility is more, is lower and it's lower because in a traditional, because you, it's based on performance. So how well are you performing? Are you, you know, 
consistently meeting exceeding expectations? Are you doing what you need to do to advance your career, learn? Are you putting yourself in a position that you're invaluable uh, with the company? Those are things you have to look at when it comes to that, because if you're not doing that, you're going to stay where you're at. You know, we just had a discussion about quiet quitting not too long ago or in a recent blog post and a podcast episode. Um, you can be you know, the one that's quiet quitting. You can be the one that just wants to do the job and go home. That's fine. But you can expect to stay in that position because of that. You know, that's just how the job market is set up. And that's how the workforce is set up. And yes, I'm not saying we don't need to revamp that and look at it because if you're doing your job and doing it well, you should be benefiting just as much as somebody who goes above and beyond because you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're helping them. You see what I'm saying? But leadership may not be what you want to do. So you may be fine with just, hey, I'm cool with I'm at cool where I'm at. I'm doing great at my job and I'm fine with that, you know? So, and that's cool too. Um, but if you want to advance when it comes to leadership, they're going to want more from you. And they're going to look at how does this person, how is they hardly better than this person, this applicant, you know, what did they bring to the table that's different from this applicant? And that's what you have to look at. And that's what you have to set yourself apart from because of the particular, um, the lower level of movement. And, and when it comes to that, you know, you have to excel, you have to go above and beyond if you want to be in leadership a lot of times. So just kind of have that in the back of your head when it comes to um, if you just, you know, I'm cool with it. But once you change your mind and say, I want to move up, then you're going to have to take that route and make those choices of, hey, I need to start going above and beyond and put myself in a position where I'm valuable um, and, you know, more valuable than different applicants. But the protein career is high. The degree of mobility is high because you pretty much can do anything you want to and learn anything you want to on your own time, right? So you're not really held to a time constraint. You know, you, you know, we're our own worst enemy a lot of times when it comes to our career pro, uh, progression and advancement because, you know, either we're not doing what we want to do or more to, to meet that requirement or what they're looking for, or we're not doing enough um, or doing too much and we're all over the place and we're not really honing in on skills and developing skills needed for the job. So that's another thing that can hinder us. So, but the mobility is high in a protein career because you have the options to choose what you want to do and move freely. Um, key attitudes, commitment to the organization, they expect that in traditional career, um, commitment to your profession in a protein one, work satisfaction, work to live, um, uh, work to live, not, to, not live to work. And that's interesting because, you know, when I thought about, okay, what does that really mean to me? Um, to me, it, it means, you know, I'm working to, you know, you know, you're working to live. So that means, you know, you're trying to make money, you know? Um, so you can get distracted by the aspect of, I want to make money. I want to make money. Um, so you kind of get caught up in that. And when you, like I said before, when you don't see that profit, you can get distracted or discouraged and quit because like, okay, this is not working. I tried it and it's not working. So I'm gonna move on. I've been there, you know, and it may be time to try something different. Not saying that it isn't, not, not saying you should look down on not trying different things. You want to try different things, um, but you want to make it to where, you know, okay, my, my focus is helping people. So let me try to figure out things I could do to help people in that vein. So you want to stay in that vein, but you know, you work to live, not live to work, you know? So living to work to me is like, I love to work. I, I live to do this. This is what I love to do. I love to help. I love to, you know, to teach. I love to, you know, preach or whatever, whatever your job is. I love to, you know, market. I love to do social media marketing. I love to grow channels or, you know, grow businesses. That's what I love to do. You live to work, do your job. So um, it's, it's, it says it's work to live because, you know, you're kind to, you're trying to look at, okay, I have to do this to make money. You know, you're, when you're, you have a nine to five and you know, you're going to get that check, you know, the commitment, you know, it's either going to be, you know, it's going to falter or it's going to, or it's going to be where it needs to be, or it's going to be above and beyond. That's kind of where it's at. It's going to be below expectations, meeting expectations, or exceeding expectations when it comes to a traditional career and commitment to the organization. When it's you, it's either I'm going to work or I'm not going to eat <laughs> unless I prepared myself for this and I still got money coming in and things like that. Multiple streams of income comes into play with that, you know? So, you know, the more multiple streams of income you have, the more leisure or the more um, um, leisure opportunities you have, or the more, you know, um, less pressure you have, you know, you still got pressure, but it's not as bad when you know that, Hey, I could try this. I don't need this for a job. I don't need this for money. I'm doing it because I want to share and help. 
um, we're good with that. You see, so but that's all a part of the process. And it started and it stemmed from a traditional career. Um, like I said, most of us start there. And the last thing is success criteria, position level and title salary. Um, that's pretty much where the traditional career is, position level and salary. Salary. Each step, each level um, of advancement, you get a salary boost, you get a pay increase, things like that. And yeah, you can get a pay increase on, you know, um, entry level and things like that, um, and bonuses and things like that. You can rock it out and, and get your um, and make your money that way. That's a good way to do it too. Um, so you could be strategic with that. You know, hey, I'm cool with doing the bare minimum, meaning just my job. Because, <laughs> like I said, going back to quiet quitting, the bare minimum is looked like down upon, but it really is meaning I'm doing my job. Like if I was doing below the bare minimum, then that's an issue. But I'm doing what my job requirement requirements are so how am i really doing the bare minimum if that's what my job requires me to do in the first place you see what i'm saying so um but you know i'm, I'm doing that i'm rocking it out and i'm maximizing my income there because I, every month i'm getting that bonus you see what i'm saying every month um i'm you know getting those sales or those leads to where i'm maximizing the most out of my income you know i'm selling those cars i'm selling the uh, phones or insurance or clothes or whatever you know you're in um, when it comes to your, your, your market, your, your business or your career or what company you work for, I'm make, I'm helping them make, be as profitable as possible. And I'm, 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 I'm winning because of that. So, you know, you want to maximize your effort at every level because that's, what's going to help you maximize your uh, profitability at every level. So, you know, it, it, they correlate, they go hand in hand. It's, you know, it really is not one without the other when it comes to business and when it comes to the workforce, that's pretty much the gist of it. You know, you, you work, output versus input, right? Going back to that, <laughs> the equity theory, you know, input versus output when it comes to it, you know, I'm putting in what I expect to get out, you know, and companies need to match accordingly. But the psych, uh, when we look at the protein career, it's psychological success, the meaningfulness of work, you know, is this job meaningful? That's what makes me feel like I'm successful, that I'm doing something meaningful. And the success to me is, okay, am I reaching people? When I look at the stats, is it going out to reach people, people checking out the resources, already downloaded stuff? Like that means I'm successful, I feel, you know? Um, the money's gonna come, you know? Yes, money means you're successful to, to a degree, but are you helping people though? You know, are you just making money? Or are you really helping people? You see, if some one person can, you know, and one person does matter, I'm not saying it doesn't, but they could drop a large sum of, sum of money on you and like, yo, I've made it. But you really, to me anyway, and this just this is just me, made it when I, I start seeing that what I've done and my experiences and kind of what I put my hands to do actually reaches the world. And that's when I feel like I'm successful. Like if it doesn't, I'm like, man, what did I do wrong with this? Or let me go back to the drawing board and see how I can make this as um, digestible or, 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 or impactful as possible, possible, you know? Um, so yeah, when those numbers come in, I'm looking at the, the people who viewed it, not the money I'm making. You see what I'm saying? That's my, that's my focus though. Um, you know, you do you, you focus on what you feel, you know, that is going to motivate you the most or be as impactful for you as mo the most. Um, cause my thing is, man, money is fleeting, man. Like your health, your wealth, that to me, that's more so, um, relationships. That's more so family. That's more so time. That's more so health. Um, is, is well for me, you know, that's just my mindset on the situation. Um, cause money comes and goes and money, you know, yeah, it brings happiness. Um, but does it really bring peace and contentment? That's another question, you know? Um, so I, I'd rather have peace and contentment for me, you know? Um, but both careers are fulfilling though. Like I found a lot of fulfillment, um, in, my, in management and helping and being a leader. Um, I found a lot of uh, fulfillment there because I saw a lot of people get promotions that were under my leadership. I saw a lot of people with the light bulbs going off. I saw, you know, um, people helping other people and growing in this, in the position. Like I, I, I love seeing that, you know? So yes, each one could be meaningful. Um, so, but, so you have to look at, okay, but which one would bring me the most freedom at this time in my life, you know, with everything going on in the world, you know, I feel like my purpose is shifting and my passions are shifting. So how can I look at having more time with the ones I love, you know, and if the job traditional job is not going to allow you to do that, then you may have to look at the protein approach and look at how I can, you know, 
have my own business or have more time, you know, with my family. And it's all about intentionality. And also it's all about, you know, doing things on purpose. I'm setting myself up for success on purpose. I'm putting money into my 401k like this and the percentages like this, because I know they're going to match it. I'm going to get more money in the long run. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saving my money. I'm still have fun. Like I got toys, a lot of, a lot of toys that I probably shouldn't have uh, when it comes to, you know, video games and arcades and stuff like that. I spent a lot of money, but you know, but I set myself up to do that. You see what I'm saying? Like we didn't miss a beat and we're still good. We still reached our goals and financial uh, goals and things like that. So uh, according to the plan. So we were prepared for that. You know, you, you always want to in your budget, put fun in there somewhere, you know, because you can, you know, we can miss out on family time and fun time because we're trying to just strictly, strictly uh, stick to a budget and fall apart and, and um, drop the budget anyway because we're so miserable doing it you know no make it fun you know make it a game make it hey like we checked out checking off these boxes this month you know what i'm saying make it a fun situation to where you have to earn that time off or earn that um going out to eat or earn that fun you know movie or whatever arcade trip or whatever you know you want to set it up to where it's a a game to you in a good way you know it's a serious situation, your budget and, and getting your finances together serious. However, you know, when you look at it like, hey, this is a I'm having fun doing this. It, it makes it a little bit easier. It takes a little bit of, you know, of the pressure off of us to meet the, the budget. So but I know I said a lot in this and there's even one more to discuss, which is like a hybrid of the two, which is a boundary list career, which is kind of like a contract work, like, you know, realtor, um, financial coach, stockbroker, things like that. You know, you have, you can work with different people, with different companies within your uh, market, within your, uh, your, your, your business, because um, you're, it's, you have the fluidity to do that. You know, that's just, you're a contractor, basically. You, you're, you're, base, you're, you're commission based uh, when it comes to your, your job. So that's kind of how that works. But, you know, whatever one feels best to you far as when it comes to where you're at in your life now is what you want to look at. Like I said, the, the tr traditional route gets our foot in the door and it helps get us, uh, gives us a stepping stone towards maybe a protein or boundary list career. But typically it's traditional. And then, you know, we, we go from there. Um, so even when it comes to each of these particular career um, development opportunities or, or career um, approaches and paths, we have to look at, okay, where am I at now? You know, what, what is going to be most fulfilling to me? You know, I know what my parents are saying. I should be a doctor. I should do this. I should go to school and yada, yada. And I listen to what my parents say because I appreciate their hard work and I, they, they love us and things like that. I get that. Um, I listen to mine. Um, but uh, ultimately, I, I didn't, at the end of the day, I listened to mine, but I still made my own choice to go into the military. You see, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had a year to figure it out after high school. Um, and I just worked until I went into the military, you know, worked at a call center. So um, you have time to figure it out. Um, but you also have time to prepare within that figuring it out. So the more tools you have to prepare, the, the, the likelihood of your success or your success rate is going to be higher because you prepared for it. You know, any great athlete, any great performer, they always practice. And, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, don't, uh, uh, Nick Saban, I believe. I heard it on a podcast, Ed Milet. Shout out to Ed Milet, man. I've been listening to him a lot lately. He's, man, an amazing person, uh, amazing podcast, um, really inspirational. You should check it out when you have a moment. But um, said something that's profound, man. They, they practice like, okay, they, they don't practice, um, like you say, practice makes perfect, but they, they practice until they can't get it wrong. And I'm like, that's so profound because it's like, okay, we typically practice to get things perfect, but I'm no, I want to practice till I can't get it wrong, you know, to, to getting it wrong is, is, is off the table. You know what I'm saying? So that, that put, that's kind of did a shift in my thinking a little bit. Cause it doesn't mean we're not, we're going to be perfect. Like you always want to aspire to be great. Right. But we do miss the mark sometimes and we do um, fall short. And that's just because we're, you know, only perfect person is Jesus. Right. Um, if you believe, if you're a Christian, right. Um, but you know, we want to take that off the table. Like if, if that's not in my view, I'm not distracted by it. You see what I'm saying? Because that's a lot of pressure. You ever been, say you're bowling and all eyes are on you and you, you know, you got that, you got to get a strike to win and things like that, that added pressure, it, it could shake you, it could rattle you. Some people are cut out for it. 
And some of us, it takes a while for us to develop hard skin and uh, a mindset to get through that. Like, I'm not really good under pressure. Like, I kind of fold a lot of times <laughs> under pressure um, until I figured out how to, well, when I was coming up and as a leader and associate, uh, like, I seemed like I folded under pressure, but then I kicked, you no, know, I don't know if it was the, the military or something kicked into me. It was like, man, you've been through way worse than this. Like, come on, man, you can handle it, you know? And um, so, you know, we practice like losing is not an option. You see what I'm saying? We practice like winning is the only thing that we can do. Now, when we lose, yeah, it does, it does hurt and it is frustrating. It doesn't feel good, but you count the wins, you know, regardless, because even in the loss, you did some things good, right? There's some progression in there, right? There's some good things, some positives, some highlights in that. So um, I don't want to, you know, with not your average boss, I don't want to cultivate, um, perfection, right? That's just not a real situation. You know, we, I, I don't feel we can be perfect. Um, but I could feel we could still be the best version of ourselves and strive to continue to work on ourselves each day. So that's what we got to look at. How can I do that? What's, what's the tools for me to do that? So, um, hopefully you got some from this podcast and this episode, please feel free to um, reach out to us. Um, if you have any further questions or about career development, we're going to actually kind of shift some things around when it comes to the site and have more um, of these kind of situations to where, you know, you have more access to me um, when it comes to questions and things like that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I did a partner with uh, career fitters, or excuse me, career fitter, um, dot com. I'm affiliated with them and they offer a career assessment test. Uh, it's, there is a free version of the test that gives you good ground and good insight on what career um, works best for your you know, personality type and your desires and how you would handle certain scenarios in the workplace. So it's kind of catered towards, you know, your answers to the, the, the test. Um, so, you know, answer as truthfully, honestly as possible uh, when it comes to it and kind of, you know, really take your time with the test. Um, there's a free version of it. And the link is in our um, our resources page, so you can check that out too. Um, there's a, no, there's a one you can pay for as a premium one that really delves into like salary and what jobs are best for you and things like that. And that's premium that that costs. Um, I think it, it varies nineteen ninety nine to thirty uh, five ninety nine. Um, it does vary, but I think if you use my link, is at a discounted price. So just check that out. The free version. Start with that. If you like the premium, you know, like what you saw, want to go premium. That's you know, that's great too. But start with the free version. The free version is enough to help you out um, and get you a start in your journey um, when it comes to you know your career and and advancing your career. You may be in a place where you're just starting out and trying to figure out where you want to go. This is perfect for you, you know? Those steps, those stages, that's perfect. And you may be in a place where you don't know what your next step is. You're in a career you really don't like, or you've outgrown, you felt, or a career that is not fulfilling anymore to you. This is for you as well. You know, you can look at, okay, what are my hobbies and how I can, you know, what are what's my passions, what's meaningful to me? And what's the steps I need to take to get there? So hopefully you, you found some insight here and uh, found this helpful. Uh, like I said, please feel free to get in touch with us on notyouraverageboss.com. And if you have any questions, please reach out. We do re respond um, now very quickly. I mean, we check it often now uh, as far as the email and the websites and, and things like that. So, um, but thank you for listening and thank you for coming you know, with us on this journey. And uh, and hopefully it's impactful and you're getting something from this podcast and not your average boss .com. So thank you once again for listening. This is Adrian Hackney and keep being great. Listen to Not Your Average Boss podcasts on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and more. Thank you for listening.